God bless you. Now, if you'd please like to open your Bibles to Jude. This will be an eye-opening and important study. We're going to go through many things, but we will begin with Jude. So Jude verse 14 and 15, we shall begin. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Now, Jude is specifically quoting from the book of Enoch. You won't find Enoch in the Bible in today's time. It was removed. It was first removed in 381 or 384 AD under Augustine. Now, before Augustine, it was in the Bible. You'll find it in an Ethiopic in today's time. But before Augustine, it was taught. Before Augustine, those that follow Jesus knew this book. Before Augustine, it was not removed. It was at that time that it did become removed. Now, as Esdras warned, as the earth grows older, evil grows stronger. And also was warned in the book of Esdras. It is warned that they will try to remove my laws from the people so they do not know him. Now the book of Enoch was specifically for the people in the end times. As it says in the beginning. But this isn't the only point in your Bible where Enoch is actually quoted from. We're going to look at other verses that we're not aware of. Now, many will argue about this particular book, but I tell you this. When they removed other books later down the line, are you aware when the time of the Reformation and you had Martin Luther, do you know which other books he wanted removed from your Bible? Well, Hebrews, that would be gone. James, that would be another one gone. Jude would also be gone. And the book of Revelation would also be gone. But they did not agree with him. So they are still here. But had they have agreed, those books would be just as gone and just as distasteful as Enoch is to people. Now, all these different books that have gone from time. Same as if you go to the 1611 King James. You'll find all the old missing books. But you will know as Apocrypha. The older books. The extra books of wisdom. The book of Esdras. That is so specifically detailed. That we can see exactly what's happening today. Because of that book. But not many people know that. Not many people have read it. The information in that book for a person that does not know God. And then comes to find faith. is absolutely terrifying. Because it makes you realise. That if more people have known that book. There would be far more Christians. There would be far more people. That would not be cold nor lukewarm but church faithful those that would deny self pick up cross and follow Jesus example because you can see it so much that is specifically detailed in that book and we in this generation can see it word for word and as the earth grows older evil grows stronger and it's because of that, that strength and evil, that it starts to remove things, starts to switch things up with different doctrines. 
those that believe in, saved by faith alone. But James warns you, faith without works is dead. And people go, oh, works, and they don't understand. Abraham, Hebrews, this book will explain it even better. And remember, these were books they wanted removed, but didn't get removed. And they will break it down better for you. Abraham, his faith is proven by his works. He doesn't just believe, he follows, he obeys. He was a friend to God. Moses, by his faith, by his works, he went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh wanted him dead, but he went to Pharaoh. And he told him all the things that would come. Remember, he'd fled Egypt because of when he killed that Egyptian. So that he was wanted for a crime. Yet his faith, though wanted for a crime in another land, he went back under God's command. He was faithful to God. Nineveh and Jonah, when he was in the big fish, Nineveh was going to be destroyed. And Jonah eventually went there and he warned them. And you know what? They listened. They heard the warning. They all repented in sackcloth and ashes. Turn from your violence and your wicked ways. And maybe God will hear us. For who knows if he will relent from his destruction. And God saw their works and he did not destroy them. Ezekiel 33. When the wicked man turns from his wickedness and starts living righteously, he will not die. He will surely live. But the righteous man that turns to doing wickedness, he will die because he chose to turn to wickedness. All of these books were for doctrine, for learning, for us to grow, to build that relationship with God. For Jesus says, many will come in my name, but it is the one that does the will of the Father. And as you see in Matthew seven twenty-one to 23, and they say, oh, but did we not do this in your name and this in your name and that in your name? And he goes, I will declare to them, I do not know you. And he will cast them away. Those that practice lawlessness. And 1 John 3 verse 4, what does it say? And sin is lawlessness. The practices of sin. When you know better, you do better. You leave sin at the foot of the cross. For in baptism you are washed clean. A new heart and a new spirit are put in you. Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27. Romans chapter 6. It's all there. And you'll find people picking things that they want, that they like, because it shows them wrong. They're not nearly as good as they think they are. And it's when we realize how wrong we have been, how deceived we have been, that we come to repentance. Repentance to put right what can be put right. To lament, to be torn to the heart, to feel guilt, lamentation for wrongdoing. And to have a rapid change of mind. That rapid change of mind leads to a change of actions, a change of deeds. Jesus doesn't tell you not to do good deeds. He says do them in secret. He doesn't tell you not to pray. He says pray in secret. He says don't tell people your good works. For your Father in heaven knows what you do. It's about the heart. It's about that change in that heart. And God will give you a new heart. He will give you a new spirit and he will work in you. And you will keep his judgments and his commands and do them. To be a faithful son of God. Faithful children of God. Not to be deceived by the enemy. Who sows tares with the wheat. And the tares and the wheat grow together. And various times these books warn about the tares and how they have sown discord among 
many of us to pull us away to cast us into ungodly deeds ungodly works into ungodly ways their ungodly deeds are right there these things will condemn them until you repent I knew not I did wrong forgive me guide me work in me strengthen me alone I can do nothing but with you all is possible call unto God confess your sins seek his guidance for the Holy Spirit to be poured upon you to work in you to strengthen you for we no longer live but it is not I that live, that Christ in me, that work in me, for greater is he in me than the prince of this world. And you will not be conformed to this world. You will be strengthened in spirit as God works in you. Now, Enoch is quoted multiple times in the Bible. A lot of people don't know that, nor realise it. So I'm going to take you to Matthew 22. And we're going to look at verses 23. Now this is Jesus specifically saying this. Now the Sadducees, they come to test him with a question. Let's find out. Now the same day the Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to him and asked him saying, Teacher, Moses said that if a man dies having no children... His brother shall marry his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Now, there were with us seven brothers. The first died after he had married and having no offspring left his wife to his brother. Likewise, the second also and the third, even to the seventh. Last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of the seven will she be? for they all had her Jesus answered and said to them you are mistaken not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are like angels of God in heaven now you won't find that verse in your Old Testament but you will find it in Enoch and it's Enoch chapter 15 now, this book is in Roman numerals, so it will take me a little longer to find them, but I will find them. From verse 4, And though ye were holy, spiritual living, the eternal life, you have defiled yourselves with the blood of flesh and blood of those also do who die and perish. Therefore have I given them wives also, that they might impregnate them and beget children by them, that thus nothing might be wanting to them on earth. But you were formerly spiritual, living the eternal life, and immortal for generations of the world. And therefore I have not appointed wives for you. For as for the spiritual ones of the heaven, in heaven is their dwelling. The angels, they have no wives the eternal they are as the angels in heaven those that put off the perishable to the imperishable from the corruptible to the incorruptible now there is more in John Jesus talks about the many mansions now in John it's chapter 14 so in chapter 14 of John and verse 2 in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you now Jesus tells you of the many mansions a place for you to, that is being prepared now this is also spoken of in Enoch and that's Enoch 45. Now, Enoch 45, verse 3. Where are we? That's verse 2. 
Now 43, 44, 45, verse 2. My eyes are blind. Why can I not see the number 3 here? To raise their days in the sons of man. Uh, we shall read from 2 till I find it. Right. And I asked the angel who went with me and showed me all the hidden things concerning that the son of man who he was and whence he was and why he went with the head of days and he answered and said unto me this is the son of man who hath righteousness with him whom dwelleth righteousness and who revealeth all the treasures of that which is hidden because the lord of spirits hath chosen him and whom and whose lot hath the preeminence for the lord of spirits for ever Oh, I've read 46. I just worked out what I did wrong. I do apologize. Uh, Roman numerals. X's, then L, then V, then an I. That's 46. That's not 45. Sorry. We'll get this correct. I am learning. Man is fallible, but God is not. Forgive me. On that day... Hang on, what verse was I after? It was 43. Verse 3. So, on that day mine elect one shall sit on the throne of glory and shall try their works and their places of rest shall be innumerable and their soul shall grow strong within them when they see mine elect ones and those who have called upon my glorious name. Blessed be the Lord. Their places of rest are innumerable. And Jesus says there are many mansions. Many. They are innumerable. Blessed be. And he make a place for you. And there it is again. And now. In John chapter 12. Verse 36. What does it say? While you have light. Believe in the light. That you may become sons of light. That's John 12. Now in Enoch, it's 108. Now we will find 108. We will figure this out. Now, where are we? That has to be 99. So this must be 100 somewhere. It's XC, isn't it? I think it's XC I'm looking for. To make 108. Is it XCV? XCV and 5. Hang on, where are we? We shall work it out. XC. And then we have two, three, I think it's, what does 108 look like? It's CV3, so I've got to find CV3, wherever that will be. C, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it is verse 11. Where's verse 11? And now I will summon the spirits of the good who belong to the generation of light. And I will transform those who were born in darkness. And who in the flesh were not recompensed for such honour as their faithfulness deserved. Now, the generation of light. The children of light. Now, Matthew nineteen twenty-eight. There's verse 28 in Matthew 19. Now this is, so Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that in the generation when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. 
Now, verse 12, also in Enoch 108, the next verse, And I will bring forth in shining light those who have loved my holy name, and I will seat each on the throne of his honour. Now, in the next verse, And they shall be resplendent for times without number, for righteousness is the judgment of God. For to the faithful he will give faithfulness in the habitation of upright paths. And they shall see those who were born in darkness led into darkness, while the righteous shall be resplendent. And the sinners shall cry aloud and see them resplendent. And they indeed will go where days and seasons are prescribed for them. What a sad thing. Those that did not turn from their way. And do you remember when Jesus told us with the rich man and Lazarus? The rich man goes, ah, he sees Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham being comforted. But he was in torments and agony. And they cannot cross once they go their place. That they are appointed. Much is in the Bible. Much is forewarned here. And Enoch is for those in the end times. It is a sobering thing. It was all forewarned how it would become and what it would be. But many of us never knew. But the words were there. They always were. God always prepared a path for every one of you. But it's up to us to hearken to his call. It's up to us to give up this world and seek him wholeheartedly. It's up to us to deny self, pick up our cross and follow Jesus' example. For those that do not deny self and do not pick up their cross and do not follow Jesus are not worthy of of him it's a sobering thing and those that have faith and believe in Jesus that means they listen to what he says because they believe in him and have faith in him and he told us to sin no more to turn and repent for the kingdom of God is at hand for God does not change Same as in the Sermon on the Mount. And he said, just even hate someone in your heart is the same as murder itself. He said, just to look at someone with lust is the same as to commit the action. Because it's the heart and the desire that defile of the flesh. And then the flesh goes after its desires and its wants. And they will consume and never end. And those that do not know. The greatness of God in his glory. Now his spirit works in them. Oh, to ask you shall receive, knock, the door be answered. To seek and you shall find. Every temptation, every struggle, you pray out to God. For the Holy Spirit to be poured upon you and work on you. For in Galatians it tells us the fruits of the Spirit. And how great that spirit is that works within us. Remember the last one being self-control. So that which we struggle with, temptation, desire, we come to God. We ask for those things that the spirit hath. That we can overcome them. If these things you struggle with, you take them to God. With man alone it's impossible and the desire, the temptation is always there. But with God everything's possible. And as he told us in Ezekiel 36. He will sprinkle cleansing water on you and wash you of all your filthiness and all your idols. And he will put a new heart and a new spirit in you. Old Testament telling you of baptism. And if you're not yet baptized I tell you get baptized. I didn't know it was important. 
I got woken up in the middle of the night. Need to be baptized. Everything changed that day. I'm the man you see today. Not because I'm a good man. But because the prodigal son came back home. God called me back. Blessed be God. For his love endures forever. And God is long suffering. And he is full of mercy. So I tell you. Hearken to him. Live in the spirit. Not in the flesh. The flesh is corruptible. But when you are baptized. You are reborn. And you put on the new self. And the old self is left behind at the foot of the cross. You can see all those things you did before. You'll know you did them. You won't understand why. I can speak from experience. But you'll leave it all behind. And you'll pick up your cross and follow him. For Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And you'll love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength and with all your spirit. And you will love everyone as yourself. And it's because you love everyone as yourself, all the good things that you do will be manifest because of it. So quench not the spirit, for it is the spirit that worketh in each and every one of you, that will guide each and every one of you into all truth. It will work through you to overcome every struggle you've ever had. Those that have sinned much are forgiven much. And those that are forgiven much, they love much. Those forgiven little, love little. So seek a heart full of love. Don't let the world overcome you, for the great falling away is upon us. Are you seeing the change? It's time to prepare. This was just a few verses from Enoch to show that it's quoted in the Bible specifically to show you that it's spoken of the things in it there are more I have about 17 listed that I'm aware of so far in my studies but there could be more remember I'm but man I am fallible but God is not and if you sin confess all to God and seek his forgiveness that he wash you clean in the blood of the Lamb I pray this study has helped you this day. This study is specifically to show about Enoch. I will do more on this. God bless every one of you.